friends. Peace to you from the forest of Miron. This is the backyard of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and all the Tanaim. A pleasure to sit here with Moi. Baruch Hashem. We're holding in the time called Sfirat Omer. Sfirat Omer are the days between Pesach and Shavuot. According to the Mekubalim, these days have the Kedusha of Chol HaMoed. The Ramban speaks about this. Mekubalim in these days don't do Kavanot. It's the same idea of the Tefilot of Yom Tov. <clears throat> these are days of preparation for Matan Torah. And obviously the Mitzvah Doraita that we all do every day, counting the Omer. Hayom, Shnei Masar Yom, Ala Omer, Shem Shavu Echad V'chamisha Yamim. This simple mitzvah of counting the Omer and the Pshat is very simple. Every day you count the day, the time of the Bet HaMikdash. At the end of the 49 days, we bring a special korban called Korban Omer. This korban is unique. It's not, um, it's a flower offering, not brought out of uh, chita, not brought out of wheat, however, brought out of barley. Uh, not common. A barley offering, a special offering that comes in Shavuot, Shtealechem. And this is the Pshat. In Kabbalah, these days are very, very unique, very different, very important, very special. Everyone knows that in Sfirat Omer, every day you say, Today we are fixing the Midah of Hod Shebegvura. Suddenly everyone becomes Kabbalists. What's Hod? What's Gvura? What's Sfirot? What's going on? What am, who am I and what am I to do with the Sfirot? And what are the Sfirot? And what's this concept called Tikkun? Fixing? Rectifying? Rectifying what? There's more questions and answers about this. And let's try to, Bezat Hashem, shed some light on the general concept of what are the Sfirot, what is a human being, and what's the relationship between them? And how is this all connected to receiving the Torah? Kadosh Baruch Hu, Baruch Hu, Baruch Shemo, Creator of the world, Rashid Bara Elohim, Ve'et HaShamayim Ve'et Haaretz, Enod Milvado, there's nothing else. No human could really see. Akadosh Baruch means see is no beyond reasonable doubt as long as we're alive. Of course, when a person leaves this world, of course, they meet their creator. And let's pray that we're not shocked to the bad. Of course, we'll be shocked to the good. This creator... Creates a reality. Look, here's a reality. It's creating this little thing that fell from this tree. Millions and trillions and infinite amount of details and worms and bugs and leaves and multiplicity. Infinite amount of details. One simple one, unimaginable, beyond time, beyond space, is creating time, creating space, and infinite amount of details. He teaches us that the way he does this is, is through something called the Ten Sfirot. Ten Sfirot are ten creations that he made. These are the ten primal creations that he made. Through There's really nothing else created besides for them. Everything that we see and experience and sense and know and imagine and so on and so forth is the unfolding of the potential that's already in the Sfirot. The Sfirot were created and everything is just unfolding and revealing and opening. Why are the Sfirot called Sfirot? Many reasons. The Ramak brings a couple, whatever I remember by heart. One is that Sfirah is Milashon Sipur, talking. In the Creator there's no talking, Can, there's no discussion in Him. There's no conception, there's no discussion, there's no concept, there's no... We talk about his revelation, the Sfirot. We could, and the Sfirot is a Sipur. Another reason they're called is because of the word Mispar, number. The Creator is one. And the idea of number, which is 
multiplicity, anything more than one, has to do with the Sefirot. Obviously, even though the Sefirot are absolute in absolute unity with the Creator, to the creation it seems like there's ten, but really it's just one. So therefore there's a number, we could already talk about numbers. Another reason is the Sefirot is Melashon Sfar. Sfar is, um, is a border. Ir Sfar. Meaning there's the reality of the Creator, the timeless, the endless, and then there's the time and there's matter. And then there's a reality that's in between the two. That's also creation and also not created. It's also a number and it's also one. It's also... It's 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 a memutza. It's an in-between level of between the 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 absolute unity of the Creator and the absolute creation is these ten sefirot. <clears throat> the many 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 more reasons for those who learn the rishonim, but either way, these ten sefirot, chokma, bina, dat, chesed, gvura, tiferet, netzachot, yesod, malchut. Now, this sefirot is everything is created f- from it and through it. Everything. There's nothing else in the world. Every, every behavior, every object, every anything that you could imagine or can't imagine is created through these ten sefirot. The study of Kabbalah, in many senses, the study of these sefirot. And I'm not trying to simplify it and to give answers. This study is a study of a lifetime, if, even if one merits Deep secrets of the Sefirot are deep, deep, deep. The deep way of how the Creator is creating the creation. The Ari Kadosh opened up to Am Yisrael the understanding in the Zohar. A whole new understanding. Even though the Tzadikim before him, the Ramak. The Arizal really revealed something new. And he revealed to us that there was something called Shvira and something called Tikkun. This concept in Kabbalah is called Shvira Takelim. That means that these Sfirot that HaKadosh Baruch creates, he created them in a very unique way. That he created them, first what he did was he put them in groups of three and seven. The first top three, Chochmah Bin Adat, we'll call them one group. The seven lower ones, Chesed Gvura Tiferet. Are in a separate category. They're connected but in two categories. An example to this we could see in the human body. The human body is created exactly as a mashal to the ten sefirot. The three top sefirot are re- re- resemble in our, ma- in our head, which our head is one unit, and then the body is a separate. Obviously, they're connected and they're interacted, of course. The seven lower sefirot, HaKadosh Baruch Hu did something very interesting with them. In the Kabbalah, it's called that, he, that they died, or that they fell, or that they broke, all kinds of Lashonot. What this means is, is that these concepts, He took them and separated them from His unity, as if He hid His unity from them. And He made it possible for these concepts to also be in a wrong way. For example, the Sefirah of Chesed, the Sefirah of Chesed is the Sefirah through which the Creator gives all the Chesed to creation. So anything Chesed that you see in the creation stems from and originates from the Sefirah of Chesed. Any love. You love your kid, you love your wife, you love food. You see love, you experience love, you experience kindness. Anything you experience to do with kindness or good or giving or has to do with the Sefirah of Chesed. Obviously... I could love the wrong things. We all do. We all love things that are bad for us. How is that possible? Because the Sefirah of Chesed, HaKadosh Baruch Hu hid his light from it, means broke it. And now it's possible for, for this, it's possible for the creation to also love the wrong things. The Sefirah of Gvura. Any expression of strength will come from Gvura. Any war, any victory, any fight, any anger, any uh, any physical strength, the ability to lift, the ability to anything that has to do with strength originates in the sphira of gvura. Obviously, the sphira of gvura could also be used in the wrong way. 
a person could get angry, a person could use his strength in violence, a person could use strength for the wrong things. All these, this is a consequence of a Kadosh Baruch Hu breaking the Midah of Gvoa. The seven lower Sfirot, a Kadosh Baruch Hu on purpose broke them. In the Kabbalah, this is called Soter al Menat Livnot, that he broke in order to build. That means that he took these concepts, he broke them, that means he made it possible for them to create all kinds of realities that are not true, that are not one, that are not one with the essence of God. And now man has free will. Now man is born into this reality where he sees there's good creation, there's bad, there's good possibilities, there's bad possibilities. I have good strengths and negative strengths. I'm born into the good and into the bad. And this goes on with all the midot. Tiferet has to do with harmony and beauty. All harmony and all beauty that you'll see in the world originates from Tiferet. Netzach and Hod are the supporters of the Tiferet. And also Netzach and Hod is, is the Tiferet expressing itself onward to the right and to the left. These are deep concepts. It's hard to explain in one word. And it's hard to explain in a deep way because I don't understand these concepts fully, fully, fully. Life is a... <laughs> the study of Kabbalah is not that, oh, wow, I understand and I'm going to teach it to you. Believe me, me, myself, I struggle with understanding these concepts deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and I'm constantly learning new things in Bezat Hashem. One day I'll get to that understanding of them, but these are very, very deep, deep concepts. But the Chachamim spent their whole life studying. <coughs> but to take it, to simplify it to what we're doing now. So that means that a Kadosh Baruch Hu creates broken realities, creates wrong, creates the possibilities for wrong, the possibilities for evil, the possibilities for selfishness, and these seven attributes. And man, mankind, is born into this reality where now man is given a body and a soul. He's given, uh, tend he has tendencies Selfish tendencies, egotistical tendencies, tendencies to fill his desires, to, to, to his emotions, even though they're wrong. Now the Torah, the Torah is the, is the light that fixes the world. The Torah is the one answer of the Torah is the formula for man. When man follows the instructions of the Torah, the 248 positive commandments, refrains from doing 365 negative, he is building himself, he is designing himself according to the infinite design. Man's actions design himself, right? If you look at yourself, anyone that's real with themselves, they realize, what do I do every day? What I do every day. My habits. I eat the way I always eat. I sleep the way I always sleep. I talk on the phone the way I always talk on the phone. I play soccer the way I always play soccer. I walk the way I walk. I la we slowly uh, mold ourselves into a certain thing and we follow our habits. A person that does mitzvot is living according to the godly instructions and he slowly molds himself to become uh, God-like, similar to God because the mitzvot, like we always say, the mitzvot are not instructions for us only. The mitzvot are the mitzvot Hashem. These are mitzvot that Hashem Himself does. These are infinite instructions that the infinite, uh, so to speak, behaves by them Himself. And when man, who's not infinite, man is, is born right now into a body of flesh and blood, very temporary. When man follows the infinite instructions, he molds himself slowly, slowly, and becomes similar to the Infinite One, and he becomes infinite. So now man is born far. We're born into this world. We're given a body. We're born with self-centered, with all the bad midot. If we said with ego, with, uh, with uh, following the, you know, all the desires of this world, with sadness, with depression, with careless talking, that's what we're born into. Tashev enosh ad daka, but omel shuvu adam. Now we have to return to become infinite, to become perfect. And that the instructions to do this is the Torah. So why would one not receive the Torah? When the creator of the world 
came to mankind after the Yitzhak Mitzrayim and asked every nation, do you want the Torah? What did they say? What does it say in the Torah? One nation said, nah, you can't kill. I can't, I cannot kill. One nation said, not, no stealing. I cannot steal. This is how I live. That means that a, a person's midot, a person's behavior becomes a part of what, what that's what they like. And they reject any behavior that's other that's different than their own. Even though they the creator tells them this is the secret for infinity. But a person, that's what it says, Kol Because my ma'asim eventually, my actions eventually, they, they are the ones that will decide inside myself, do I receive these instructions or not? If do they go against me or not? What? The Mishnah in English. Ah, Mishnah in English. Anyone that his, that his wisdom is more important to him and has more of than his actions, his wisdom will never last. It's, it's, it's one's actions that eventually make the, the decision, what wisdom will I accept? So the nations of the world, the 70 nations of the world, why are there 70 nations? Because we know there's 10 Sfirot. The three higher Sfirot, HaKadosh Baruch Hu did not break them. He broke the seven lower Sfirot. So that's why we're dealing with seven Sfirot, even though there's 10. These seven Sfirot, each one has 10. We're, we're, so there we have 70. The 70 negative attributes of the seven, of the seven Sfirot, each one of them are, are, are in one nation. So the 70 nations... Each one of them represents a connection to one of the negative aspects of the broken Sfirot. And therefore, they don't want the light. They can't accept the light because they, their essence is, I, I live for stealing. That's my sport. I live for killing. I, I'm, I'm a warrior. That's what I do. Look at, na- what do you mean? There's nations that their whole wisdom is how to kill, how to fight, Kung Fu and all, all these things. They're, they're real, these real nations. That, they're, that they're, their claim to fame is their their war tactics or their, you know, their purity. Yeah, all their impurities. That's their claim to, they can't, they can't, this is their essence. They can't give it up. So that means a person, a human being, today, that is connected to a bad midah and loves that bad midah. In a couple of weeks, there's going to be Matan Torah. Kadosh Baruch is going to come to, the, to you and say, Moishele, Eduardo, Jose, Isaac, whatever your name is, Moi, do you want the Torah? And you're going to ask him, what does it say in the Torah? And he's going to tell you, it says that you can't be with that girlfriend because she's not Jewish. And you can't eat in that restaurant because the meat there has blood. And you can't eat shellfish because it makes you retarded. <laughs> and you it have to and, of course and you can't and on Shabbat you have to rest and close your business and you're going to think and say mm, I don't know if I want it I don't know if I want it I don't want to give up that bad habit that I have I don't want to give up this weakness that I have I don't want to give up this desire that I have so therefore before Matan Torah we comb with a fine comb all of our midot because if my midot if i'm connected if i love the bad midot when the light comes i will reject the light i first have to inside me purify my midot so my midot are pure and then when the light comes then i'll be happy i'll rejoice i'll be so i'll feel wow gavad the light is coming this is what i wanted so first Derech Eretz means Tikkun Amidot. Mm. Persons fixing their Midot is before Torah. Because again, if the Torah, if my Midot are not fixed, when the Torah will be given to me, I will sadly enough reject it. That's how we learn, Mishnah Navot says, Imen Derech Eretz and Torah. But, Imen Torah and Derech Eretz. The Torah is the, teaches us how to fix our midot. But we have to start fixing our midot before it's... In English, it's called the catch-22. You have to be involved in fixing your midot and receiving the Torah. But 
but I mean, that's not a mitzvah. So when you say you have to be kosher in order to get the Torah, no, you have to you have to correct the midah in order to get close to the mitzvah, right? Like, right, the midot, very good point. The midot, one second, there's a fly here. See, like eating that fly is six lavim. Yeah. It's worse yeah. than the chanzi, right? It's amazing, because we, we, we don't, if, when you study, you see what a fly is, <laughs> and what a human is, and what a neshama is, and it's amazing. Right. So, let me cover this. <clears throat> yeah, let's go a little deeper. We spoke about Shvirat HaKalim, everyone learned about it. When the Kadosh Baruch Hu, at the beginning of creation, Arizal teaches us the first thing is called a Tzimtzum. Kadosh Baruch Hu withdraws his presence, his, his revelation. Even now, the Creator, is, there's no change in him. He exists in creation just as much as he existed before creation. The same, there's no change in the Creator. Ani avaya lo shaniti. I never changed, Hashem says. However, he withdrew his revelation. You don't, you can't see Hashem in this world. If you saw him, there'd be no free will, there'd be no creation. So he, the first level that we learn is Tzim Tzum. He withdraws his, his revelation from a certain dimension. Into that Tzim Tzum, he brings a Kav of Or and Sof. That means a certain aspect of the infinite light is revealed into that. Now, so now the creation that will be put into this into this creation will be also also experience a void, a zero godliness. He will not feel godliness, but also have the opportunity to connect to that kav, to, to that light, the or and sof that's shining, and slowly, slowly reveal the creator in that world. Then there's a long process in Kedvarizah. We learn about this that. After this, HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveals his light, but he breaks the light, he breaks the Sefirot. But just to bring it down to what we need from this, is that we spoke about this many times before. There's Orot, Nitzatzot, Kelim. There's light and vessels. When, the, when everything is one, the vessels and the light are one. Whatever vessels is, whatever light is, put that aside. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu broke the vessels, that means that he took the vessels and he lowered them into a certain area. The lights went up to a different area. With the vessels came what's called sparks, nitzotzot. They keep the, the vessels alive till the tchiat emetim, till the, the light will go back into the vessels. That's tchiat emetim. This process of, of unifying the light and the vessels is the, is the avodah of Amisrael. Right, we're, we've, we're, we were given a body, we're given vessels, we're given, we eat, we drink, we're involved in the world with homes, with money, we're involved with vessels. And the light is the, the instructions of how to do it. When I take this pomegranate juice and I make a bracha on it, and there's tumot umasot, and we bought it with money, we didn't steal it. We did many, many mitzvot to get this pomegranate juice over here, or now didn't, many people did. We're, we're using these pomegranates according to the way the Creator wants to use them. So we're taking these vessels and we're connecting them with the light. And now the, now it's in, in the real world, they, there's a triat emetim, there's a big party. And a deeper, a little deeper than that, we said it's not only broken into three levels, it's broken into five, us, five levels. We said the Rosh Hashanah, kol tzameh. Kelim, levushim, tzlamim, mochin, orot. What does this mean? Is that the light and the vessels, in order for them to connect, to, to unify, they need one level in between them, a third level that it's partially light and partially vessel, and through that level, they, those two could become one. So there's, there's the kelim, and then there's levushim. Levushim is another light that's in the kli, Understanding it, all these things in order for, them, if, for us to understand it would be impossible. Therefore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us something better than a book. He created us exactly according to the world. 
Exactly. So if you want to understand these things, you don't have to go far. Just understand yourself. So your vessels and your behavior does slamim and levushim. That means your midot, your midot fix your levushim. According to your midot, if my midot are God-like, then my vessels will be willing to accept the God, the light into them. If my midot are not God-like, they're different than God, then my, then my vessels will, will, not, will not get the light into them. So there's two tracks. One track is called Tikkun Amidot. One track is called Mitzvot. Yeah. Two separate tracks. And they're fixed. The midot are broken into four basic categories. We always speak about this based on the elements. Fire, air, water, and earth. From the fire and of these elements, a person, the, the bad midot that we have is, is gava, it's ego. Ego also means anger, anger and anger. Anger and ego is really the same yes. thing. Kaas, anger is just a, an expression of ego. A person that's, that has no feeling of, of me, of I, will never get angry. We get angry when things don't work out my way or when I was stepped on or when the I gets hurt, then the anger comes out. But the, that's just external. Then there's wind, sicha betela, just idle talk, just talking. And that comes lashonara and sheker and rechilut and a million averot. Then there's the water, which is from there come all the the tavot, the bodily uh, tavot of the body, and the earth. From there come sadness and laziness. These midot we're all born with. Why? Because Adam Rishon, before he sinned, his body was created from the earth of Gan Eden. The earth of Gan Eden is all good, and therefore he had no bad in him. After he sinned, Hashem made a new body for him from the, from the four elements of this world. And therefore, since the elements of this world were corrupted by his sin, also the elements were corrupted, and therefore the corruption exists within us today, in our being. So there's one track of fixing the midot, of a person working on his midot, battling his ego, his anger, his desires, his temptations, his laziness, controlling his speech. And then there's another track of mitzvot. Obviously, a person that will not fix his midot will never do the mitzvot. Because there's no, mit, there's no mitzvah not to be a baal gava. It doesn't say anywhere in the Torah. Thou shall not be haughty. to mitzvot. What? It's a prerequisite to be done. For sure. If a person has, if a person is all day running after, doesn't you know, all day running after how to how to fill his temptations, he won't be able to to not do lotin af. He won't be able to keep kashrut. Won't be able to keep shabbat. He'll have to make you know. Won't be able to not steal because he needs it. He's, a, he's, he's a, it drives him beyond. The midot are a prerequisite for the mitzvot, and the, the tikkun happens from both of them combined. That's, so that's exactly the time that we're holding it. We're holding now in Sfirat Omer. Sfirat Omer is the time of fixing the Midot. Fixing the Midot. So this week we're in the Midav Gvura. Midav Gvura, very, very deep Midah. And every Midah now, we have to look at it in two ways. What is the correct way for that midah to be and the incorrect way for it to be and identify it in myself. I have in me good gvua and bad gvua. We have things that we do that are that out of the midah gvua that's inside of us. For example, like anger. Anger is a very popular one. Human beings get angry. A good midah gvua would be, for example, to, do, to wake up in the morning. <laughs> that's a good midah gvua. Discipline. Yeah, self-discipline, self-control, things that require me, right? Let's see you, you know, when your wife says something you don't like, let's see you shutting up. 
You know how much gvura that takes? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see you in an argument, not answering back. That's that's discipline. That's the that's the correct way for me. That because that's the way Hakadosh Baruch Hu Himself is. Hakadosh Baruch Hu creates a world, gives us instructions, and we slap him in the face all day. And he could just pull the plug. <laughs> he's just giving the energy to the system. As I'm sinning, he's giving me the energy to sin. That's Gvua. To be quiet and to let the other person, even though it's hurting you and even though it's hurting them, to wait for them, to have patience with them. Eventually they'll do Tshuva. Tons of Gvua. And it's only through fixing the midot that a person can receive the Torah. A person that does not fix his midot, a person that does not make a conscious effort to, number one, identify his bad midot. Because if you don't identify your your bad midot, you're my friend, you're not even in the story. So many people think, I'm okay. See you later, my friend. You didn't even start working. If you didn't identify the animal inside of you, if you can't look at yourself and say, I'm a... I have a, a disgusting, dirty animal living inside of me that I hate. And I'm dealing with it and I'm battling. It's a part of my personality and I'm struggling with it. And it's called this and this and this. If you didn't identify it, you're not, you're not you didn't start yet. You think you're perfect. If you, if you meet a person that thinks he's perfect, you go the other way. Because that means that person didn't, is not even recognizing, is living in such gava, they're not recognizing their bad, bad midot. We're all born with bad midot. That's how Hashem, Hashem creates us purposely. The design is that we're created imperfect. And the beauty is, is that when a, ch- a person struggles to perfect himself, then he's the one that perfects himself. He's the one that creates himself. It's our imperfections that will bring us into, into, into our closeness to HaKadosh Baruch into Gan Eden. When I identify a bad midah in me, that's a good day. That's a special day. Because I just realized, wow, this is a gift Hashem gave me. Hashem gave me this bad midah. So I could remove it, so I could become like him, so I become similar to him. The whole point of life is to get to what's called dvekut. Dvekut means absolute unification and similarity and connection to, to the Creator. And that only happens when a, when a creation becomes like the Creator himself. When the creation, I'm born not Creator, I'm born disgusting, I'm born dirty, I'm born selfish, I'm born uh, full of ego, that's how we're born. And when I study the Creator's personality and the Creator's ways and the way He wants us me to live, and I struggle and I struggle and I struggle to become like the Creator, that's success, that's life. So the first thing is to identify the midah in me. Yes, I have bad gvura. Of course we have bad gvura. But I want to be good. I don't want that bad midah. That decision itself, I don't want that bad me. That, that means that when the Creator comes and says, you want the Torah? I say, yes, of course I want the Torah. I hate my bad me. Don't take them away. I'm aware of them. I hate them. They're my biggest, my biggest pain in my life is my bad me. I don't want them. I understand that you gave them to me so I could cut them, so I could kill them, so I could come close to you. And I appreciate it. Thank you. But I don't want them. A person should come to, to Torah, like to Matan Torah, like, like a, a person that was walking through a desert and now he wants water. A person living with his midot is difficult. But don't think that you could be a nice guy without Torah Mitzvot can't. You could be a very nice guy. You could live in a nice community, like in the American TV shows, good morning, good evening, like the fake, it's, it's fake. Also, the Nazis were very, very nice, and good morning, and good evening, very, very nice. Impossible. Why is it impossible? Not because I said, because that's what the Creator said. There's only one Creator. He's the only infinite one. Human beings can't even fathom the word infinity. Anyone that thinks about a timeless existence we'll get a headache we can't imagine this our brains can't imagine this we have to be humble and realize that this world has a creator and the creator created us in a certain very very sophisticated this world is very necessary and very sophisticated and the, and the success of life 
The amount of zeros you have in your bank account means absolutely nothing and everyone knows that. The success in life is the creation succeeding according to the Creator's standards. That means becoming like Him. You have to understand the potential of man is to be God, to be like a Kadosh Baruch Himself. Ani amarti Elohim atem. Banim atem la Adonai Elohim. We are created the Tzelem Elohim. That means that we are created with the ability to become like a Kadosh Baruch Himself, to become infinite beings. This week's parasa, Kadoshim to you. Of course, there's always going to be the Creator and there's always going to be us. But the highest level possible to be connected to Him. And this is only through fixing the Midot and accepting the Mitzvot of the Torah. And understanding that, yes, the Mitzvot don't make sense to our little minds. It's okay that my little mind doesn't understand the infinite mind. That's fine. That's fine. What helps me with that is humility. When I understand that I'm a creation, I can't claim to wake up in the morning. Every second that I'm breathing is a gift from Him. I'm nothing. A person, the, the healthiest person in the world, one little thing goes into him, boom, he's dead in a minute. Look how many people we know that no one, no, who, who could say today that they have any control on matter? The biggest scientist in the world, he thinks he's smart, he'll drop dead tomorrow. He can't prevent his own death. How could he prevent anything else? Be humble in front of the Creator. Understand that there's something big going on here. The Creator is not a joke. It's a real thing. He really created the world. He really created us in a very sophisticated design. He created us really imperfect. And He really gave us the tools to achieve ultimate perfection and vikut in Him Himself. It's a very serious matter, very real matter. I want to finish with one thing. How do we get to all these things? How, how do we get there? Is it one of the strongest instruments and tools that we have, if not the strongest, is our mouth. It's the power of tefillah. Tefillah doesn't mean to open a sidu, to put on tefillin. All those things are important and special and should be done by every Jew. But tefillah means when a person addresses his Creator and speaks to him. Now, it may seem funny, it may seem weird to talk to someone that I, I know all that. It's true. But the facts are, this world has a Creator. He sees me right now. He hears me right now. He loves me right now. He's creating me right now in everything in creation. And He wants me to turn to Him. And He wants me to talk to Him. And He's... And He wants me to figure out life. And He will help me. And He will send me... I've seen in my life things that I never thought could work out. And we prayed. And things changed. I don't know how. Things that I never imagined that they could change. People that could never imagine. All kinds of stories. Not me. Everyone. Am Yisrael is full of stories like this. Our Creator is alive. Am Yisrael Chai. We have a Oda Vinu Chai. We just came out of Pesach learning about the miracles. What's so important to study about the miracle of Yitzhak Mitzrayim? Why is that the foundation of the Emunah of Am Yisrael? Okay, I understand as a creator. As a, why is that? Because Judaism and religion is not history. We're not, we're not celebrating the exodus of Egypt. We're not celebrating the love that he once had for our forefathers. We are celebrating the fact that that king that destroyed the, the biggest empire in the world, the Egyptian empire, and did the ten plagues, and Kiat Yamsuf, and took his kids out of Egypt, and brought them from the lowest spiritual level that they were at. They were sunk into the Egyptian culture and their beings. They were there for 210 years. State of Israel was around for 70 years. Look what a being. Wow. 200 years. Three times the state of Israel. They were born into, into slaves. Their grandfathers were slaves or they were born already. They were deeply involved in idol worship and, and, and witchcraft, deeply in astrology and astronomy, deeply, deeply involved. That means they were sunk into the Egyptian culture to the highest level. And that king took them out and in 49 days opened the heavens and the whole nation, men, women, and children, three million people, experienced the same experience. 
a beyond doubt, beyond doubt, real experience, more real than reality. The Creator talking to them, giving them specific instructions of life through Moshe Rabbeinu. This Hal Sinai was never questioned by any religion, by any culture. Everyone knows that this happened. Sadly enough, in the last hundreds of years, our own Jews started questioning it, because it's always like that. But everyone knows that this happened. But that's not what we're celebrating. We're not celebrating history. We're celebrating that that same Creator is alive now. That He could redeem us, that He could split the sea this second. He's as alive and as loving and as real as He was then, right now. There's no change in Him. And He will redeem us again. And the miracles that we're going to experience in the next revelation are going to be so big that Amisa will stop mentioning it's Yad Mitzayim. It's Yad Mitzayim will pale in comparison to the miracles that we're going to have to experience. The next revelation that's going to be is not going to be one nation saying, oh, I know there's God. It's going to be the whole nations of the world coming together and saying, we know there's God. There's nothing else. Everyone will come and bow down. So these are the holy times we're in, my friends. I urge, I encourage everyone to, to take a couple minutes of your day, shut your phone, find somewhere quiet. If you can find a nice forest like this, it's great. Even a room, even somewhere quiet, and just look at the, your Creator and say, my Creator, I have no idea who you are. Never met you. I know that you know me. What I'm doing now is uncomfortable. I'm talking to a wall or to a tree. But just talk to him and ask him to fix your midot, to understand him, to understand his Torah, to understand why are we the chosen nation. What does it mean? What is Am Yisrael? To tell him that you want to be close to him, that you miss him, that you want to figure out your life. Talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. Make a relationship with him. Every relationship starts with, hello, how are you? Just talk to him. And he will answer. He will answer. L'chaim, my friends. Yes. More question. If the main work of this, uh, the county of Yomer, is about midot, breaking them, why is it important to count it? To say the Berachan, to... What, what, actually, what actually happens when we say uh, the county of Yomer? Kadosh Baruch Hu, in order for these processes to happen, gave us mitzvot. Every mitzvah has the quality of making a certain effect happen. So when I say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kiddishanu Mitzvotah V'Tzivanu Az Sfirat HaOmer. And then I count, Hayom, today, Shnaim Vas, Shnaim Asar Yom LaOmer. I count it. Hayom is light. Omer, is, is the is the animal food? It's barley. That's the 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 nefesh elokit shining into the nefesh beemit. Hayom shnei masar yom to where la omer into the nefesh beemit. The omer is machal sorim. It's very. I don't want to go into it. It was very deep. We could learn there's a deep tzemach tzedek about this. But the, the idea the idea is to purify the animal soul. The midot are in the animal soul. That the animal soul will be willing to receive the Torah. The godly soul doesn't need to receive the Torah. It doesn't need any fixing. It's perfect. What happens if you worked the midah, but you didn't say the the, the um? No, that's what works. No, the, the 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 fixing of the every mitzvah is like this. If a person right now, you know, a woman, uh, she was nida, right? Now she she wants she wants to go to the mikveh and become pure. She doesn't go to the mikveh. She goes. She does meditation and yoga and all the good stuff, and she gives that kind. She gives goodness to everyone and cleans it, anything that, but she doesn't go to the mikveh. She's not pure. These are instructions that the Creator gave. And like I said, all these, the, the, the reason that mankind battles these instructions is purely from ego. Ego, gava. Have humility in front of your Creator and understand that you, your brain is the size of a mango. And that's fine. And He is the infinite intelligence. You can create a cockroach. You can't. You can't create an ant. You can't do anything. You can't save your own life. You could die in a second. He is the infinite creator. So just be a little humble next to him. And if he says, these are the instructions, do his instructions. What's the... And to count the armor without the work of the Midot, it's... 
incomplete. Look, like, there's. You're touching on on, on on the 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 topic of sod and pshat, and really to do. The halacha, the dry halacha, are the are the instructions, and they're true and they're right, one hundred percent. Obviously, in the halacha, there's the law, and there's what's called the letter of the law. Mm-hmm. There's, there's the <laughs> spirit of the law. <laughs> what? Yeah, the chassidim that they would be. Um... Oh, everyone. So if you do, if you have the right kavanot, if you have the right kavanot, but you didn't do the action, you did half. If you have the action, you didn't do the kavanot, you did half also. Obviously, you did something. You did the right action. The Ramah calls it your maaser tzui va kavana ena tzuya. Your maaser will be accepted in Shemaim, but your kavana won't, because really in Shemaim every, every action has to be made out of gufin and neshama, kelim and orot. It has to be made out of out of a maaser mitzvah and a kavana. It says tefila belo kavana keguf belo neshama. So the tefila, the words of the tefila, the letters are the are the guf, and the kavana is the neshama. So we have to have both. So if you do one without the other. There's deep secrets in this, how, how HaKadosh Baruch Hu really... Uh, this is the secrets of the Machatzit HaShekel. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, everyone does a half, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu combines them. There's other secrets. Mm-hmm. Sometimes in one Gilgul, sometimes you see a lot of the, our holy brothers that are not into this. So it could be in the other previous Gilgul, they were they were, they were Kubalim. But they didn't do any mitzvot, not Kubalim, like fake Kubalim. And they didn't do they didn't do the mitzvot. They only did the kavana. So now the, this is sort of machatzit shekel is gilgul. Every gilgul you do half because in the first gilgul you did half. And Hakadosh Baruch puts it all together. <laughs> but from our we we have to do the mitzvot according to their format, the way they're written, according to chachamim, the way they describe exactly. The lulav has to be exactly this, and they talk like this, and the matzah like this, and exactly, and the mikveh like this, and. Everything I call the shiurim, there's deep, 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 deep secrets that one could learn. Most of the reasons that people don't know this is because they're just simply ame'aratzot, ignorant. My friend, come, open a book. You want to know, you really want to know? Come, we'll sit, we'll learn. Everything has reasons and deep and deep, deep, deep reasons. Reasons that when you learn them, the depth is, you go out of your mind, they're so beautiful. There's nothing to fear There's nothing to fear There's nothing to fear